and uh, thank you so very much everyone for joining us for another uh, another bible study this week i really bless jesus for giving us this privilege that we could uh, uh, meet and study his word together we'll start our bible study with a word of prayer may i request uh, mr sikinder to offer a prayer so that we can start our bible study and uh, before that uh, as i'll just would like to let you know as uh, usual we are going to have 30 minutes of uh, teaching session and then uh, the forum would be open for questions comments and uh, anything if you want to add it will be open for a discussion okay having said that i would like to ask mr sikinder to open a prayer and then uh, pastor to follow it up and continue it with his teaching hello yes uncle almighty god heavenly father we thank you for giving this opportunity of congregating through the technology which has been developed by human beings father it is a great privilege for us for the called out ones and we hear the word of god and walk in that when we walk in the word of god father we face many difficulties and at the same time we are nearing the word of god through the through you only father please enlighten us and enlighten who are here and strengthen the pastor spiritually as he gives his sermon after some minutes father bless each and every family of the gci and the word of god i pray all this in the name of jesus amen amen Thank you, Sikandar, for praying, and uh, welcome again to all of you to our online midweek Bible study. Uh, even as we move into the study, just wanted to share with you the continuing uh, uh, difficulties we face in our country with regards to the COVID cases. Uh, I hear in the news that. the numbers could actually be much more than what is being reported and i think that is common news but the transmission seem to now uh, increase uh, i think we are officially at well 15 lakhs i think now i think we have reached uh, 15 lakhs from 10 lakhs to 15 lakhs very quickly so the transmission rate has increased so once again Uh, for all of us uh, the need for caution and uh, doing all that is necessary to you know to be protected let's go back now to uh, the study of the scriptures that is what we have been doing over the past uh, few uh, meetings um, today hopefully we will complete that section uh, the scriptures and then we will uh you know take your questions uh, as you you know uh, are able to recognize what needs to be discussed okay i just wanted to do a slight a, a short recap uh, with regards to one particular point and that is 7.8 the discussion in 7.8 with regards to interpretation of scripture in the past we have discussed about inspiration of scripture but interpretation of scripture is also uh, something we need to keep in mind and just a few points obviously uh, the, in, the, the the when when you teach it as a subject the interpretation of scripture it becomes a very uh, huge uh, subject you know you, you can have several classes over it but some basic thoughts to keep in mind we always interpret scripture from a canonical sense as it is mentioned in our answer the word canonical is basically the entire bible and how the bible is put together so our interpretation should be with reference to the whole bible in other words uh, how we interpret any part of scripture must be consistent with the entire scripture the uh, the entire bible you cannot isolate one part and derive at an interpretation or an understanding that may conflict with some other part of the bible so we got to keep that in mind 
we also interpret keeping in mind the church's historical reading of it in other words it should also be consistent with the historic or uh, a better word would be the orthodox understanding of the scriptures so our understanding today our interpretation today cannot be different from how the church has interpreted it over the several centuries especially beginning from the uh, early uh, ages of the church now we may differ in its application today for example the apostle paul mentions certain uh, you know strictures with regards to church discipline now that may not apply to us today because that was in a particular context so but the basic core meaning of scripture has to align with the orthodox view and that is one of the things that you know in our reformation we understood in our reformation we recognized that our interpretation was not consistent with the orthodox view and that is how after our reformation many of uh, the christian groups began to recognize that we have returned to the orthodox view so that is another part of interpretation and obviously one very important thing we keep in mind is it's always done with the context in mind the language that is used at that time the the historical setting of that time the people involved what it meant for those people at that time so all that must be taken into account when we interpret scripture and one more thought and which is i think something uh, probably you know uh, very important and that is jesus is the center and the focus of scripture so every time we interpret we must never ignore where jesus fits into this whole you know uh, uh, scenario right uh, jesus himself said that the scriptures testify about himself that is about jesus so uh, our, all our interpretation must recognize christ's involvement there christ's presence there so that's very important okay having mentioned uh, that let's just move on to 7.9 now we will now look at the question 7.9 and then uh, we will read the answer 7.9 reads as follows how should uh, sorry uh, isn't preaching also the word of god isn't preaching also the word of god and the answer is yes preaching and other forms of christian witness are also god's word when faithful to the living word of god that is jesus christ and the witness of the written word of god the holy scriptures by the power of the spirit preaching gives to us what it proclaims the presence of our lord jesus christ and faith comes by hearing god's word in the form of faithful proclamation so uh, just a few thoughts on that preaching especially you know in the in the church setting uh, we are exposed to preaching on a regular basis is that the word of god are we hearing the word of god when we you know uh, when we hear a, a preacher come and preach a pastor preaches we always pray that god would inspire the preaching so obviously we are believing it to be the word of god but uh, just a few thoughts to keep in mind it should always be faithful to the living word of god and the witness of the written word you cannot say something which contradicts or which is opposite to what the scripture says so all preaching must be uh, in line with what the scripture teaches the holy scriptures teaches okay and uh, also preaching must proclaim the presence of our lord jesus christ once again i go back to what we discussed a little earlier christ is the very center of the center right uh uh he is the one who through whom we have you know everything life and life uh you know meaning and purpose and so the presence of the lord jesus must be definitely felt now uh sometimes we can have preachings where the word the very i mean to say 
uh, where, where the name Jesus is never used. And uh, now there could be a reason for that, but I hope it is a good reason. But I think we must always connect scripture with Christ. Okay. And of course it says, faith comes by hearing God's word. So in other words, obviously inspired preaching, uh, preaching according to the word of God increases our faith, strengthens our faith. So obviously it, it aligns with, you know, being uh, like the word of God. Now, Jesus himself authorized the preaching and teaching. You remember in Matthew 28, he says, go and preach the gospel, teaching. So in other words, teaching all people, I mean, to say people, all things I have commanded you. So we have an authorization from Christ himself to preach and to teach. And so when he does, when he authorizes us, he's obviously meaning that he's going to back up that preaching. He's going to bless that preaching. He's going to equate that to, you know, his uh, word coming out to the people. So obviously, uh, preaching also can be the word of God with these qualifications that we keep in mind. We'll move to 7.10 now. Uh, and the question here reads 7.10. How do Christians relate to the Holy Scriptures? How do Christians relate to the Holy Scriptures? Let me read the answer. We expect God to use them, that is the Scriptures, uniquely to teach, rebuke, correct, and train us to live in communion with God. The written word of God is God's gift to grow us in faith, hope, and love for God, and to teach us how to live out that relationship in all we think, do, and say. Therefore, on a regular basis, even daily, we seek to hear, read, study, learn, and inwardly digest the Bible. By becoming intimately familiar with the whole of Scripture, seeing its parts in terms of the whole and its living center, Jesus Christ, we will understand that <clears throat> the biblical story is our story as well. This encourages us to live in ways that conform to that story rather than to worldly influences. All right. So uh, I think there are some important points for us to notice. How do Christians relate to the Holy Scriptures? How does Scripture, you know, why is it so important for us? Why do we give it so much of importance? I think uh, one important thing you know, uh, is something that we have personally experienced in our fellowship. Notice it says, it teaches, it corrects, it rebukes, and it trains us to live in communion with God. And uh, we from the old WCG background recognize uh, that scripture has corrected us, has rebuked us. Uh, and thankfully, we were our ears were open to the Holy Spirit. We heard the voice of God and we followed through. Uh, and I think one of the things I can mention and I uh, would like to say that my love for the scriptures was uh, also influenced by our founder, you know, president, Herbert W. Armstrong. Even though Herbert Armstrong was uh, obviously you know, in error with regards to some of the teaching. But the way he put scripture on top, and he is one person who has put scripture above everything else. He said that the scripture will give us the standard. And so thankfully in our fellowship, we have upheld the teachings of the scriptures, you know, and like Franklin would say, we have been intellectually honest uh, with regards to how we approach scripture. If the scripture says something from different from what we believe, we will align with scripture and not you know, default to our own interpretation or thinking. Notice another important thing with regards to how scripture relates with us. It helps us to grow in faith, hope, and love for God. Okay? And uh, in other words, it deepens our relationship with God and helps us to live 
uh, in a relationship, you know, on a daily basis, uh, in the way we connect with God and, uh, you know, interact with God. The scriptures are one a very important via media where we are in touch with God. When we read the scriptures, we are getting in touch with God. So the scriptures are very important part and aspect of a Christian, uh, you know, a Christian, you know, life. And uh, that's why it says it's good for us. It's a good practice to have a study of the scriptures on a daily basis. We always talk about Bible study, you know, personal Bible study, which is a good practice. Now, we don't have to be legalistic about that, uh, you know, but it's a good practice for us to have regular Bible study on our own, as well as, uh, you know, like what we are doing now. I'm glad that you're all connected so we can study scripture. Okay. One more thought from that answer. Notice it says, um, when we study scripture and see the centrality of Jesus, we will understand that the biblical story is our story as well. And I thought I'll just refer you back to what I had said at the beginning of this particular section. Scripture uh, uh, unfolds God's story, right? God is, I mean, they say the scriptures are like a love story. The love of God within himself and the love of God towards his creation. And so God is integrating our story into his story. And I thought, you know, that's a lovely way to put it. Uh, so God's story is something that, uh, I mean, it's a, it, it, it's a story that is not complete without us involved in it. So, you know, I mean, uh, uh, I, I don't mean to say God is not complete without us. I don't mean to say that. But God himself had decided to include us into his story. And so every time we read scripture, we are inspired by the fact that God is actually, you know, including our story. In fact, it's like as though he's adding one chapter to his, to his book. <laughs> and that chapter is us. Uh, we are all there in that chapter, right? So isn't that wonderful? Okay, so that is uh, uh, 7.10. Let's move to 7.11. We've got three more questions to deal with, and then I've got one more thought to, uh, to help you with. 7.11, the question reads, does the Holy Spirit ever speak apart from the Holy Scriptures? The question means, does the Holy Spirit, in other words, is, does the Spirit give us uh, revelation outside of the Scripture? Does He add some extra revelations uh, that is not found in the Scripture? That is what the question is asking. Now, this is the answer. Since the Holy Spirit is not given to the church, apart from the Bible, true messages from the Spirit depend on the written Word of God. Since that Word cannot be grasped without the Spirit, True interpretation of scripture depends on prayer. However, just as the wind blows where it will, the spirit may speak or otherwise work in people's lives in unexpected or indirect ways, yet always according to the holy scriptures, never contradicting, diluting, or dismissing, it, uh, dismissing them. However, such direction of the spirit can never become normative for the church in the way the Holy Scripture is and always will be. So um, I think the answer is quite, uh, you know, what you say, uh, direct there. What it's basically saying is the Holy Spirit obviously is not limited uh, to Scripture, the written word in bringing revelation. So we understand that God is not limited by just the Holy Scripture. The Holy Spirit can reveal certain things uh, in the way the Spirit decides. It could be, you know, in ways through inspiration or through thought, planting a thought. Uh, sometimes it is through dreams. 
um, you know, I mean, once again, uh, you know, we have to be careful how we mention these things because uh, sometimes people have some strange experiences and think that God is speaking, which may not necessarily be true. It could actually be a psychological issue and the person needs to see a psychiatrist rather than anybody else. But the Holy Spirit, even if the Holy Spirit reveals to us something which is extra biblical, uh, what is important is that it will never contradict scripture. That message will not contradict scripture or, or, or dilute it or dismiss the scripture. It will never negate anything written in the scriptures. So any message we get from the Bible, I mean, it from the so-called inspiration, direct inspiration of the Holy Spirit has to be aligned with scripture. Once again, those are standards we continue to follow so that we don't go off the track. Okay. Now, does this happen regularly? Well, the answer says, however, such direction of the spirit can never become normative. In other words, it's saying this is not normal. This is not the normal practice of the Holy Spirit to continuously give us inspiration or revelation outside of scripture. The Holy Spirit will direct us back to the scriptures for us to understand certain things but because the scriptures contains a lot of wisdom. So the Holy Spirit does not have to continuously work outside of scripture. That is what it may, means that it will never become normative for the church. So all, I mean, church, the church must respect scripture highly and not go outside of scripture to, to you know, re, to get revelation. Revelation is in one sense complete in the scriptures and anything that is apart from it is always consistent with it. Okay, let's then move to the last two questions. We are going to now 7.12. And the question reads, aren't some people apart from the Bible sometimes wiser than some people who know uh, the Holy Scriptures? Uh, it's a, this is kind of a strange question. I'm not sure uh, maybe somebody asked this and they wanted to include it here. But it is talking about, you know, the question is asking, uh, can you be smarter than the Bible? Or are some people, you know, more knowledgeable than the Bible? So let's see what the answer says. In some ways, yes, especially comparing individuals and not taking into consideration the whole church. But when this happens, it cannot be confidently known except in the light of the teaching of the Bible, especially when it comes to the knowledge of God. Uh, the important question for the church is not so much where an insight comes from. The important question is the norm by which to test it. Our faithful discernment of what is true depends on God's word as conveyed to us in the Holy Scriptures. There is no other normative and authoritative source of the knowledge of God and of his ways and purposes for human being. However, in its light, other relative truths may be confirmed. Uh, it's a kind of a strange answer, but what I understand from it is this. Uh, I mean, uh, are people uh, smarter? Uh, can they... Can they, can they give information that is uh, much more, uh, you know, true, true than the truer than the scriptures? I don't think so. Uh, the answer, one part of the answer, very clearly says, uh, everything that we think we know is true has to be tested by scripture. So if we think that, oh, you know, uh, this is true, or I can reveal this to be true, or or state this to be true, does it align with scripture? Is, does it pass the test of not contradicting scripture? That's what is important. Uh, we must realize that truth depends on God's word as conveyed to us in the Holy Scripture. Truth we know is from the scriptures. And of course, the ultimate truth is Jesus Christ himself, because he says, I am the truth. 
So anyone who poses to think that they know better than the scripture, they know better than the Bible, uh, I think uh, may be standing on uh, shaky ground, all right? Because the Bible gives us all the information that is necessary for our faith, for our spiritual life, for our purpose and meaning in life. Now that <laughs> does not mean to say the Bible has all the answers to every last question in the world. Obviously not. The scriptures doesn't give us answers on how to fly a rocket, right? The scriptures doesn't tell us how to cook mutton curry. Uh, I'm being very silly there, but uh, the, what we have to understand is the Bible gives us information that is necessary for our relational, you know, health and well-being. And of course, finding our meaning and purpose in life. I've heard some preachers talk about how, you know, they, 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 they put down some of the authors of the Bible, especially Job. And I remember one person saying, you know, um, when Job says the Lord has given and the Lord has taken, and he was accusing Job of being, uh, of saying something foolish. Uh, he says, Job was wrong. <laughs> so I, I mean, it's amazing how some people have the uh, courage and the audacity to go to the extent of saying those things. But then I, I think, uh, uh, I think the Apostle Paul says the wisdom of God, or rather the foolishness of God, is wiser than the, you know, than the great brilliance of uh, human being. Okay, so we'll leave it there, and we will now go to the last question. And the question uh, reads uh, 7.13, Do, uh, Doesn't modern critical scholarship undermine the Christian belief that the Holy Scriptures are a form of God's word? Okay, the question is asking, uh, with all the research that is being done, with all the new findings, uh, you know, now, does it prove that the Bible is not God's word. That is the question that is being asked. And what is the answer? No. The methods of modern biblical scholarship are a good servant, but a bad master. They are neither to be accepted nor rejected uncritically. Properly used, they help us rightly and richly interpret the Bible. Improperly used, they can usurp the place of faith or establish an alternative faith. Though these methods provide a useful tool, the Holy Scriptures remain, for the church, reliable and irreplaceable uh, in all essential matters of faith and practice. Such methods are to be used to help us clearly hear and properly understand the Word of God as it bears witness to the living Word of God. Methods and approaches that obscure, contradict, or relativize the normative and authoritative witness of the Holy Scriptures are to be dismissed. No valid method will place the Word of God under its judgment. So the answer is that even though there are people today, scholars in fact, and I was just, uh, you know, reading something from a, a uh, one of the modern scholars, his name is Bart uh, Ehrman, and uh, he was an evangelical Christian, and today he has become an agnostic because of all the research he has done and the scholarship that he has uh, indulged in, he has come to disbelieve in the Bible. And that is so unfortunate that those who go into such deep research. Uh, he, in fact, is a New Testament scholar who has come to disbelieve and he says, I don't believe in the God of the Bible. I have become an agnostic. Agnostic means I don't know what the truth is. Now, to answer that question that we had asked, we believe that there is enough internal and external proof that the Bible is reliable and it is the word of God. Uh, obviously, we don't have the time to go and, you know, do an entire study of that. Maybe someday we will. But there is enough proof, both historical, uh, you know, textual, uh, you know, uh, theological, 
enough proof to show that this book that we call the Bible just is not just some stuff made up by human beings. It has the stamp of God on it. In other words, it has the inspiration of God on it. So the church believes that the Bible as we have it today is reliable and irreplaceable in all essential matters of faith and practice. Okay, so uh, the Bible is not superstition like some people say today. Uh, and especially the neo atheists, oh, they attack the Bible and from so many different ways. In fact, the Bible is the most attacked book, holy book on the face of the earth. I don't think any other book has been attacked so much. But I think uh, I, I, the testimony is that the Bible remains the reliable truth that we have from God and it is being proved on a daily basis. So that ends our section here with regards to the questions and answers we have read. I want to complete this section and I think we have uh, just a little time uh, to just talk a little bit about uh, the translation. I think Praveen had asked that we uh, briefly discuss uh, which is the best translation to you. Okay, because today we've got so many translations. Uh, and uh, of course, the most uh, old, uh, one of the oldest and uh, the most, uh, what do you say, revered is the KJV, as we would call it, the King James Version. Many churches still use it. It has uh, extremely, you know, poetic language. Uh, but the question is, Along with the KJV, now there have come so many other translations. And some of the translations are directly from the original Greek and uh, uh, the Hebrew, or the, I should say, the, from the manuscripts of Greek and Hebrew. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what is the best translation? Just to give you a few thoughts of mine, and some of you can probably add to that. Let us keep one thing in mind. Remember, we don't have the original manuscripts. Okay? All we have today are copies. The manuscripts from which the English Bible is translated, Greek, Aramaic, you know, uh, Hebrew, they're all copies. Okay? Uh, so there are no original manuscripts available. So translations become necessary. Right? Now, let us keep in mind, whenever we translate, you can never find a perfect translation anywhere. Okay, so there is nothing like this is the best Bible to read. Okay, or this translation is the best. I don't think we can categorically state that because no translation can be perfect as such. What we should, what we should ask is, which is closest to the original text? Rather than saying which is the best translation, which is closest to the original text? So keeping these things in mind, remember that whenever we read the scriptures, we are interpreting. Okay. Uh, even if you read the original manuscript, you know, you still have to understand what the author is saying. So interpretation becomes very essential. So uh, uh, it's wonderful that we have the translation. And it's good that we have translations in modern English because it is actually making it easier for us to understand God's word. Okay. Now, according to, you know, scholars, the Bibles we have, most of the Bibles, not all of them, most of the Bibles are fairly accurate. Now, there are going to be what we call as textual variances. In other words, one Bible may have, you know, a particular, uh, you know, word structure. Another Bible may not have the same word structure. So there can be some variance. And there are variances from the manuscript. But basically speaking, we can rely on the accuracy of most of the translations. Okay. Uh, but what we would say is 
consult several translations. Don't stick to one. Okay. Now you could use one as you know your your basic you know Bible that you read on a daily basis, but it's always good to compare translations because sometimes you can get a better perspective, you know, of that of a of a particular scripture. But whenever you read it, remember to always follow the rules of interpretation, which we discussed a little earlier, right? And at any time, if we in the church can help you, we are always here to help you because at least we have been schooled in trying to understand scripture and the science of interpretation. One more thought before I leave this, and that is, there are some Bibles you must avoid. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, which are those? There is a translation uh, called NWT, New World Translation, which is done by the Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, uh, the Jehovah Witnesses uh, have translated the Bible according to their own theology and what we have understood is that they have introduced error into it. So we do not, uh, we would avoid such a Bible. Another Bible to avoid is the JST translation, which is Joseph Smith translation. And when I say Joseph Smith, you might remember, he is the founder of the Mormon church. And he has translated the Bible. In fact, you know, I mean, it's interesting to know that Joseph Smith thought that the Bibles we have today are all in error. So he had to do a new translation and he puts his, puts his own errors into it. And so obviously with his theology, uh, you know, he makes a complete uh, mess out of the whole thing. So we, we, we definitely avoid these scripture, these translations, because we believe they are not, uh, uh, they're not theologically right. Now, one more thought before we end. Uh, the translations of the Bible, you have a variance of translations. Some are more close to the original, word for word, in other words, literal translations, and some are more uh, paraphrases. They capture the meaning. They don't have a literal word for word translation. So a, 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 Bi a Bible like NASB, that is New American Standard Bible, are uh, more literal. They are more closer to the original text. Uh, I think NKJV is also a little bit more closer to the original. But translations like NLT, New Living Translation, or the Passion Translation, these are all more towards the other side. That is more, uh, they, they capture the thought and they use their own words, especially the message. In fact, some people really don't like the message bible some people also say the passion bible has several errors in it uh, i have not i have not done a deep study into that i'm not very sure of it one bible which apparently is more towards the center not too literal not too you know um, uh, paraphrased is the niv the new international version and the new international version has several revisions. So the NIV seemed to be more into the center, uh, not going to the extreme. So, so these are some thoughts I thought I'll just leave with you. I think I'll end there and let's uh, open it up for some thoughts and discussions. Please go ahead. If you want to add something, Praveen, regarding translations or any other thoughts, feel free. Okay, you can unmute yourself and uh, bring in your questions. Yes, Sikinda, you had a question? No. What happened, you're uh, not unmuting? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, on uh, April 23rd, I have started again reading the Bible to keep my memory the word of God alive. Even though I have read the Bible 
some uh, many times uh, from first to last uh, and uh, particularly now i am concentrating much uh, because the time allows me to read that from first to genesis to last revelation just completed a uh, 20 second i have completed that one more time and i have again started i have got one one or two uh, doubts shall i keep it in the whatsapp uh, uh one or two, one or two contradictory references in uh, king james uh, first kings 16th i will uh, uh, let you on the uh, whatsapp can i do that yeah sure i mean uh, yeah you can send me the references uh, you're you're saying that you find contradictions between yes, the two yes, only one only one that's so okay And another another thing i have discussed with uh, pravin also how uh, even though we study many times the revelation we cannot understand what revealing itself means he reveals us that we cannot understand that one and uh, uh, lamentations or something like that uh, especially the revelation we cannot understand how to understand it we definitely pray before studying the bible we definitely pray but uh, that revelation uh, book uh, could not be understood for uh, many i asked uh, many people also why uh, is there any way or uh, the approach to that to uh, understand the revelation so that we can understand and uh, grow in the word of god you are referring to the book of revelation the last yes. book in the bible right uh, yes yes okay right now we have a booklet um i think it is called uh, book of revelations testimony to jesus christ is the bible it? prophecy oh that is bible prophecy is it okay okay yeah that is bible prophecy but we have a section on revelations i think in that uh, do you have that booklet by any chance bible prophecy testimony to jesus christ and uh, testimony okay if you don't maybe i'm not sure if you have a soft copy i can i can get one copy yeah right we will send you a copy of that and the book of revelation uh mm. we have given a, a a basic guide in how to read that book mm. uh but if i can just mention that uh, when you try to decipher every detail in the book of revelation it will confuse you it may it may lead you to error and that is exactly what happened with our fellowship we tried to put meaning to every head every horn <laughs> and every beast that comes out of <laughs> you know we tried to say that these means this now it could or it may it may not but what i feel is the book of revelation has a larger story the larger story is that god will finally rid the world of the evil represented by the false prophet the beast and all the resurrections of the beast right finally god will prevail and usher in the new heavens and the new earth so in other words it's a book of hope uh it was not meant to be a what do you call it uh uh for the lack of a better word it's not a commentary on the day to day events of today <laughs> uh, now it might have some broad strokes of history right of how the history will pan out but basically it is saying that god is in control though we see the beast rising up again and again god is in control and god will finally bring an end to this evil and usher in the new heavens and the new earth if you read it from that perspective uh, you will not get stuck in all the uh, too many details and some of those details i don't think we are able to fully understand only thing i only thing i want is i i want the overall meaning just a gist of that right the real meaning which make me understand so that i understand the revelation fully that's enough okay yeah i think that you you're right by saying 
the overall meaning that is the purpose of the book right so that will be very helpful please send that book to me okay right any thoughts prani you can add to that yeah definitely most of the times when we read a um, uh, book of revelation we always read with a preconceived notion in our hearts that it is talking about future things and it is talking about end times and we need to find out when the end is going to come when jesus is going to come we want to see uh, you know what is what is going to happen what is happening in the world and we try to connect all those things and book of uh, book of revelation doesn't start with saying like uh, oh the, these are the list of things that are going to happen in the future and uh, uh, i'm giving to you john you go and tell people that's that's not the way book of revelation starts book of revelation starts with a very simple statement the revelation of jesus christ which was given to john so if we uh, try to find out every details of the future that means we are trying to find a wrong thing in a book jesus said uh, uh, when disciples asked about uh, times and all he said time timing is not in my hand or in our, in, my, in your hand it is in the hand of god it is none of your business in other words and pastor gave a message also on that when the end is going to come so ultimately through the parables in matthew chapter 24 and luke chapter 12 <coughs> jesus clearly said trying to find out the dates of the end of the time and all that's none of our business so that is one of the big mistakes we always make keep that aside number one and about the book of revelation have various sections number one is there are letters to various churches read those letters so when we read there are a meaning there are some kind of teachings that god is uh, giving to those uh, uh, churches and then he explains about the uh, he explains about yes he explains everything in a, a graphic story language it is uh, the meaning as we said the main theme whatever we say as pastor also said after the messages to the seven churches it every, everything will change the form everything will become like a story where he will tries to take over where ultimately god will come and uh, he will establish his kingdom that's a basic message we need to understand and nothing else we need to find what is the point in finding out every details that is not necessary for us we are not here to find out details we are here to find out jesus so we'll try to read every time you read any book this is one of the things i would like to encourage everyone that is when we read bible we always try to find something new. we want to find mysterious we want to understand this we want to understand that only way we can ever understand anything in the scripture is when we try to find jesus in that or when when we try to interpret in the light of what jesus has already revealed and if you try to count all the genealogies we are going to come to nothing we need to understand why this genealogy is given simple thing is the genealogy is given to show the connection that jesus has with the entire human story so how g god played in the human story this is a small example uh, i'm bringing like if you read the story of david the message is not about david we need to find jesus read about moses we need to find jesus every book in the bible we need to find jesus because it is a witness to jesus christ not to anyone else when we try to put our focus on that we will be able to understand the beautiful story as pastor said the love story of god and humans when we try to every chapter or every book connected to jesus that will reveal a lot the same with a uh, book of revelation as well so when we talk about prophecy we always need to keep it in our mind we are talking about lot of things which are about future so there are lot of speculations about it so we don't we should not keep our mind closed saying like this is talking about this only and everything i am going to interpret from there no it's not like that so let us keep our minds open god definitely reveals himself 
and uh, the revelation of the bible is not to find out uh, when the end is going to come it is to reveal jesus christ to us so only one point through everything i said is keeping jesus as a center as we read the scripture how the scripture play ma'am speaks about jesus that's what we need to find does it make a uh, any sorry i mean do we have different translations in telugu also uh, there are a uh, couple of translations uh, one is uh, whatever we are using the bible no oh, yeah. that is one second one is vaduka bhasha vaduka vaduka bhasha is i i don't think that you would love that that was made uh, very easy uh, okay. that is not a very clear language that's marketplace okay. language another thing is uh, you are making this uh, word of god alive through this technology and uh, there may be some uh, financial uh, commitment in this for one hour will you please once uh, tell me that uh, the expenditure for one hour or for the week wednesday and sunday how much the financial burden the gca will have uncle what we are going to do is the other day we had a meeting with our admin team we have prepared our budget and we have certain uh, we discussed about our expenses and we also discussed about our requirements and soon in a week or so or uh, once our team comes back completely we will put uh, in front of all the members what are the requirements we have so according to your own uh, <coughs> you know how the lord leads you you can contribute and help us towards it because uh, particularly many people want it continuously live the because of this pandemic we will do continue uncle and we will do our best to do that and uh, as i said uh, we will bring forth what our requirements we have so okay. people can uh, open their hearts and you know uh, help according to the need thank, thank you, you so very much that. for asking that yeah thank you any other questions uh, or comments you'd like to make franklin uh, through your studies is there something you'd like to share with us it's uh, about him also yes. say something bertram yes go ahead bertram unmute yourself we can't hear you bertram unmute yourself i think buddy is just trying to work out his any other sheila you're okay can you can you hear me yeah. yes sir buddy yes we can hear you now go ahead ha uh, oh so, uh, long back i i i received a whatsapp message uh mentioning that uh, the end times are here and that the corona virus uh, pandemic is a trail to it uh so what's your question did you hear me yes yes what's your question buddy i do you want us to confirm this is the end time <laughs> no <laughs> i i not i just i just had uh, a message uh, okay. on whatsapp saying the end times and that the corona virus pandemic is the trailer Okay. I'm not not believing it. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. May for the benefit of others. Yeah. Yeah. May this may this is that or you know something about it. Thank you, Bertie. Uh, but you know the end times actually started two thousand years back. <laughs> yeah. You know when uh, Jesus uh, ascended. You know, and the apostles recognized that now we wait for his second coming. now obviously we don't know exactly when but we are definitely closer to the end time <laughs> uh 2000 years closer to the end time so uh we will wait for uh, the lord to decide uh, what uh yeah, what what probably what the sisters try to uh, to convey is, is that the un, uh, all the end time you know men in the book of relation and the uh, rise uh, mentioning you know the gospel uh will be proclaimed preach in the world uh, and then shall the come and all the wars the rules of wars and the 
fans. Uh, that uh, what he what that person is trying to convey is uh, look these end times are here uh, maybe to follow and this uh, uh, coronavirus pandemic is a thriller. <laughs> okay, all right. I think so. Uh, I mean, don't take seriously. I, yeah. I just said what I said. That's it. All right. <laughs> we leave it at that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, we are close closer to the end uh, time of uh, our conclusion. Anything you would like to say, uh, Praveen, or, uh, or uh, pra yes, pra pra uh, pra uh, Franklin, go ahead. I can't hear you, Franklin. You have to unmute. So can you hear me? Yes, now. Yeah, yes. Sir, uh, yes. James version and NIV will be sufficient sir, to get a good understanding. Uh, which are the translation you mentioned, NIV and? No, sir. New King James version yes. and NIV. NIV. Yeah. Both should suffice for me. Uh, both are good translations, uh, you know, but I don't know. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're going to do a major theological study, that's then right. you may need other translations. But if it is for personal edification, that's fine. Uh, definitely, I guess uh, one day we should offer uh, we should offer a crisp and uh, shortened version of uh, uh, interpretation methods, I guess that would be helpful to uh, our members. So, okay. you know, we can help you out uh, how we can interpret the scripture with the, some basic principles. Right. That would maybe, be maybe, useful. Maybe Prabhu, can you work on a lecture? <laughs> oh, definitely, we'll do that. Yeah, you can work on it and then you can present it. Definitely, we'll do it. Uh, Mrs. Noah, did you have anything to say? I, I saw you raising your hands. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, time is up and thank you again for joining us. I hope that these studies are uh, stimulating and uh, helpful for us to continue our strengthen our faith. So let me request Franklin, if he can close in prayer, Franklin. Unmute yourself. Yes. Uh, gracious Lord, a loving Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to meet, to study together. Lord, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all your mercies and compassion. Even in the uh, busyness of our life, Lord, you gave us time to understand your word. Thank you so much. Lord, we ask, Father, that you will unlock our hearts and our minds. Ultimately, Lord, only you can reveal your word to us. Father, may your spirit touch us and open our hearts and minds to understand your word, to value it, and then to learn to live by it. Lord, to grow as your child by every word of the Bible. Thank you, Father. Bless our time together. And even as we go to our normal life, help us, Lord, to remember that you are molding us and do mold us, Lord and help us to grow into a deeper and a stronger relationship with you. May we always trust in you, trust you in everything. We ask for your guidance, protection and care, especially Lord, from tough times and from this novel virus and from every danger, real and hidden. Be with all of us, Father, so that we could meet again. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. We ask all this, Amen. Amen.